Good evening, Las Vegas. And people around the world. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were busy little socialites last night. Yeah, we were. Busy. Fun. Fucking Had a good time. Night. Everything was late last night, though. Oh Everything went so much later than we expected. Yeah. Way it later. Did. It did. <laughs> but we had the honor of giving away a few wait radio awards at the BHM Awards. Yes, last we night. did. We that was a lot it. of that fun. That was a lot of fun. That was a hoot. And then our buddy uh, Jacob from Plush threw his own birthday party. <laughs> Which is awesome. It's great. It's great. So we had to go present him with the official birthday fuck off ginger. I think when you're a club promoter, you should throw your own birthday. Oh, I because, agree. Because you know how. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. But uh, next, uh, next month, September 21st, I believe is a Saturday, will be Katie's birthday. Oh, so we'll get another party. Any we'll reason to it. party is good. <laughs> I have too many reasons to party. I'm staying home. <laughs> oh, you old poop, and you call me old. Oh, she was the queen of the dance floor. Last I know, but time. she's already said, I'm not going out next weekend. Like, she just overdid it this weekend, and she can't take it another weekend. I, already, was... I already told you guys two weekends ago that this month we had to choose one or the other. I could not do both. Right. You little old fucking lady. I am antisocial. I'm not a particularly social person. That's true. When she, Even when she goes out to be social, she's not very social. No. I'd rather dance by myself next to our table, which is kind of what... Which she did. Which I and totally, showed her panties. I did show There's her There's a video on our uh, Curvaceous Bounty not, Wall. I, when I got there that night, Alexia, she goes, here, look at this. She's like, keep watching. Keep wait watching. for it. I was wait, wait for, for it. it. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. And boo, there it was. <laughs> panties. <laughs> Which matched her dress. I did. Which it was, was awesome. Was I was great. not squacking last night. No, you were no, not. But I... you would have been, because you was on the dance floor, and I'm like, whoa, if she didn't have no underwear on, she'd have been a, that'd have been a squack right there. That's why you wear panties when you wear a short dress. <laughs> That's right. So that you can dance all freaky funky and flash everybody your thick nation booty shorts. That's right. Well, I got, Which I happen to, have on last night. Um, I got to the BHM Awards. I was earlier than the other girls. They had another event they had to go to. Right. And um, Another awards event. I, I Was there a memo that that was a black affair? Because everybody was dressed in black. I know. And here I show up with this red dress. And it was so funny because um, Curve Media came with us to take photos. And... Um, I'm, uh, he's got a photo on the dance floor and everybody around me is in black and in the middle doing the wobble is this red dress. <laughs> it was like I stood up like a sore thumb. But um, that was a fun event. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. a lot of fun. It was nice to see everybody, and congratulations. We got to present the award for independent radio show host, which was... Deacon Balls. Which we love. Who got married yesterday. Yeah, and the reason he wasn't at the awards was because he was getting married. Which means no more sandwiches for Well, Deacon I just Boss. want to know if maybe at the reception they had sandwiches at the re wedding reception. Um, uh, probably. probably. And then what was the other award? <laughs> and then the other one was for online... No was for <laughs> I totally forgot it now. I it was, it was for, for mainstream it was, media. It was for uh mainstream media radio hosts. On air yeah, on radio air. personality. And that right, was right, DJ right. Thump. 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 Fine looking. There were some fine looking oh, gems there. Oh my goodness last gracious! Night and dressed very nice. Fat man Detroit man. I thought he was getting married last night. He was decked out. <laughs> decked out. Everybody to the was dressed up. Well, Earl, Alexia and I had three total events to go to right. last night uh we went to the nevada broadcasters hall of fame induction gala because we had two very good friends being inducted in the broadcasters right. hall of fame and we estimated that alexi and i can be inducted into the hall of fame in 21 years yes wow in 21 years we'll be able to be inducted because you Will have you be able to 25 walk up years and pick up well no no we, we can actually yeah. we can actually be inducted in 16 years because the show has been going on for four years Right, isn't oh, it 25 is, years? It's, it's 20. It's, what, 20? that many years oh. in the business? Is 20 that years that in broadcasting. 20 yeah. years okay. in broadcasting. Now, here was the great thing. Um, Sierra was actually kind of maybe had to be social because some somebody probably came up to the table and stood next to her and they talked. And we met a beautiful girl from uh, another radio uh, group and she was a salesman for them. And so we were talking and beautiful, young, slim girl, beautiful, pretty dress. And we were talking about what we had to do later and stuff. And she said something about she loves to see people who are confident. We were talking about the clothes in the room. And I said, you want to see some confident women. Yeah. You have to go to Plush Nightclub right. tonight. Yeah. Right. 
and she showed up. Oh, was that the girl you guys? She was, oh, that's she was awesome. there. I was totally shocked. I'm and like, damn. So I she was sitting down. Uh, we were we had VIP sitting up by the DJ, right? Uh, right. T Rock was rocking it last night. Oh Good my music. god, his music was great last night. He's a great DJ. Yeah, he is. And uh, she was sitting down on the second level. So I went over and I, well, I went to go visit her after I had seen her again because I, you know, she came because of us. So right. I, I invited her to come sit with us up at the front. And she goes, "Well, I brought my, uh, I, I don't know what she said he was, her friend, boyfriend, I um, think. gorgeous." Yes, exactly. And I said, "Well, that's all the better. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to join us." <laughs> I think she felt a little bit. But irritated. I thought that was great that she was she came and joined us and she had a good time and you didn't know, dance it, at all. Kinda, though. I still get amazed sometimes how people just like when they don't know about the BBW community, especially, you know, mainstream thin people, and you explain to them and or you show them like you did, they are in awe. Yeah. Like they just cannot believe that this <laughs> there's really this group. Yeah, fat people are okay with themselves, guys. Right. Did, I, I told you guys a story about this uh admin retreat that I went on with the company. Mm -hmm. uh, so the company that we work for now took all of the admins out on a retreat. And part of our retreat was a paddle boarding lesson. So all the girls are wearing like t-shirts and shorts and they've got their suits on underneath and they're all one piece suits, but they're refusing to take off their shorts and t-shirts. I whip my clothes off. I'm in my string bikini and some booty shorts and I'm like, let's do this. And they're all like, Wow. <laughs> like, I'm the biggest girl here, and I got my boobies flopping everywhere. Come on, ladies, take your clothes yeah, off. <laughs> I love the confidence. I, mean. I, I love I love what the clubs here in town, or uh, all over the country do, is um, if, if you are a, a larger girl and you don't feel comfortable going out, just go to a club night. Go in whatever you can put together that looks nice. Yeah, that you're comfortable in. That you're comfortable in, yeah. in, and go to a club night, and you will find yourself buying nicer clothes or better fitting clothes or clothes maybe that make you feel sexy maybe they're a little bit more revealing a little shorter right? skirt a little you lower how cut many people top. come up to me because i you know i give my my arm speech all the time to girls at the club they, right i can't show my arms and i got the you know i can fly okay the flying nuns got nothing on these arms okay <laughs> so um you know, and I always give my, and somebody again last night came up and they're like, look at, I'm wearing, no, I'm wearing a sleeveless dress. You convinced me, you convinced me. And I love that. Stuff. I do. I, I do. love that I can be a part of a positive change. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm part of the bash cliche where one year you show up in a one piece and you're all nervous and the next year you're in a freaking bikini. That's what I did. <laughs> and now I don't, now I have my one piece. I have one, one piece. And, and it's been sitting in my closet for like three years. This is the thing that I love. It doesn't just, uh doesn't just give you confidence around other fat people it gives you confidence around everybody yeah. because people. like you're you how many people how many people were big girls like you at that retreat i was the only big one right right so exactly. there you go i was the and only I, girl and i go to mainstream pools in town right in the same bathing suit i wear to the bash right and don't think twice about it and i i think it's great because the more people that can do that the more people that can say to other people Fuck you if you don't like what you're looking at. Don't look at me. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I know when I go out, I mean, I'm a big girl and I got my arms flopping, but I am put together. Yeah. You know, and and that's what it's all about. You know, just put yourself together. Feel good about yourself. Right. And go out there and smile. If I go that's out right. to dinner with my family, I am not squacking. When I go out with my friends, I'm still not squacking because I wear panties, but I could be. Right. You want to hear funny stories? I went back uh, two marches ago back home to Michigan for my niece's wedding. And I looked in my closet to find something to wear to this family wedding <laughs> in November in Detroit or March in, March in Detroit. And it's really cold there then. I had to borrow something from one of my more conservative friends because I really <laughs> didn't have anything appropriate to wear. Yeah. Because in Vegas, it's so hot so much of the year around here that we typically go sleeveless or, oh, you know, yeah, short sleeve most shirt year. most of the year. It's rare that you need something longer than maybe a three quarter sleeve. Well, so. it was so funny because the outfit I did by the had long sleeves, a little higher neck, and but it was it was flashy. It was like blue sparkly. <laughs> so like I walked in and they're all like, "Oh, you can tell the Vegas girl." And I'm thinking in my mind, "Yeah, I should have wore something else out of my own closet if you'd have told the Vegas girl." <laughs> I like Vegas girl. That's more like Nye County outside the city of Pahrump girl. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Pahrump. Did you all see that the girl Heidi Fleiss got busted with all this marijuana pots <laughs> in her house? 
Dear Heidi Fleiss, <laughs> Poor Heidi. stop being an idiot. Well, supposedly she was growing it for a dispensary somewhere here in Vegas, but she hadn't got her card right. to grow it. Poor Heidi, Donna Trump. She had all them birds you, at one time. I'm, I'm sorry, but if you are, if you have ever been, or if you are a, some kind of star, or even if you're not a Just celebrity, no. no, no. If you've if ever been known, arrested once, your ass needs to stop doing shit that'll get you arrested again. Well, you have to, you have to believe that. People are more keen to keep an eye on you, no matter how down, far down the celebrity list you go. Correct. They're still going to keep an eye on you because they need the news. Right. Right. Well, and she, you know, she was on uh, Celebrity Rehab, and um, you know, she's got busted for what drugs. What she was? She, and, the, and she was the she Hollywood sex addiction. madam. And now she's. And then, then do you remember she had a laundromat, a sex launch? She was trying to open a male brothel in Peram, right? And was having problems with the licensing yeah <laughs> and then now it's marijuana but she says it's legal because she's you know grown up for a dispensary right but she doesn't have her license right for it. exactly that's right. what i'm saying oh uh, my you know God. if i put a third wing onto my house and i don't get the you. permits for it my ass is getting busted i watched so. heidi Except fleiss that... on celebrity rehab she did two 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 seasons and i'm telling you i thought about she driving ne- she needed two seasons well of no rehab. you know what they had they had celebrity <laughs> rehab and then then the people if they want to go to like uh, they call it sober house where they're got free but they you know it's there for six weeks you know it's like a halfway place but i I've, t- I've been tempted to drive to Perump to Heidi's laundromat <laughs> to see if I could see Miss Heidi. I'll tell you and LV wants to know if Charlie Sheen was with her. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I am not a fan of reality TV. And then I learned something this last week that made me less of a fan of it. It's not real. <laughs> It's not. It's very strange. Well, number one, uh, the reason that reality TV has exploded is because they don't have to pay the unions. They don't have to pay their their dues. They don't have to uh, uh, get you're not in the get union, whatever permits it is person. that you need to make a movie because or it's anything not a docu- like that. Because it's not a documentary or a movie. It's a reality right. television show. Right. So they bypass all that crap. And, you know, and they're filming like all the time. They are very invasive in your lives when they film. I, I I I don't know. But they have to allow that in, you know, like 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 I hate like okay, I hate the Bachelor, okay. or the Bachelorette, you know. Um, I don't like like the Kardashians. And I, I I'm pretty sure that we've had some people come onto the show that have gone and done things so they could tell the story on our show. You know what I mean? Oh, I know exactly what you mean. So they go, well, I'm gonna be on this show, so I gotta have a great story. So let me go out and do something stupid. Please don't do that. That's reality TV. We're like reality radio, yeah, yeah, right? Absolutely. We are no, we are like no, reality no, radio. No, we are not because number one, we don't script this shit. We tried it one time and it sounded so bad. We said, fuck it. We're not scripting this shit no more. Now, if our guests decide that they need to go out and do something stupid, like, you know, blow off a hooker's ass or something. So they have a story for our show. We do not condone that. We don't want made up stories. We don't want shit you went out and tried to do so that you would be more interesting. We want real stories. From real people. We want shit like, uh, who was that guy that had sex in a haunted castle with a girlfriend that he never talked to again after that? <laughs> That's a real fucking story. You know what? That, that reminds me. That's good um, shit. The, the week after the bash, you know, when I was given my bash update, one of our listeners um, <laughs> sends me a message and says, um, I'm just wondering um, how much of um, your updates are... <laughs> are true and how many are embellished for the show and i'm like not much much." (laughs) oh by the way i left the show early last week and i'm fine now yes you are (laughs) yeah i am i'm fine now i was at the emergency room though okay so uh during this uh, opening part that we usually do there's uh, a bunch of news stories that i collected over the week and i i put them on twitter so if you're not following us on twitter just go find us at sin city bounty you can follow sierra uh sierra scb on twitter you can follow sweet cheeks although she doesn't twitter because she doesn't have a fancy phone she has a phone with buttons still but that's sweet cheeks (laughs) scb and um i'm alexia z on or alexia scb on twitter so you can follow me but the, our main account is uh sin city bounty and i uh i do the sin city bounty and i usually retweet if sierra retweets or if i tweet so anyway so but one the main story that i wanted to cover was uh the story about the survey or the study 
the Institute for the Study of Labor was is a private independent organization, and they did a study of 7,500 Greek households. Greek? Greek. Well, first off, the Greek ain't got no money left. So. Right. And uh, anyway, the title of the study was uh, People Who Have Sex At Least Four Times a Week Make More Money. Not in Greece. Nobody making money there. But. <laughs> See, there's a reason why y'all call me how. Well, here's the thing. I was telling Sierra about this. I said, did you see this story? And I said, what have we been doing? What have we been telling people for four years? Fuck often. (laughs) We've been telling you people how to make money for four fucking years. If you're broke, (laughs) it is not our fault. (laughs) We do tell them every day. Every time we're on. Fuck often. I love it. I love it. That is funny. (sighs) Really? So I wonder... Maybe well, you're I, just happier and you're, I, I, you can work I, hard, you know, you work more because, you know, when your personal life is going well, your work life is going well and vice versa because you carry those over. That's what it is, is people who uh, have frequent sex tend to be happier, have higher self-esteem, better reasoning ability, and are less likely to be depressed, which in turn helps make you more money. <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> all about it. Okay. <laughs> You need to have more sex. Okay. You don't have sex more than once a week, maybe, right? Sometimes. Unless it's like bash or something. Sometimes. Then it's like but you got to remember, I don't have a regular partner either. That's you know, true. if right. I had a regular yeah. partner, oh yeah, I'd be on it every day. Fuck that. Either that or just a regular hot tub. We know you can get anything you want out of a hot tub. Yeah, true. So we did a we did a we did a short thing about all the different kinds of dating sites out there, right? Like the farmers only, right? The Ravelry, uh, the knitting people, the pet owners, well, right? Ravelry is not a knitting, is not a dating site. No, 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 a, a social site. Yeah, it's a social site where it's... you can find dates. Uh, I haven't seen any straight dudes on Ravelry. <coughs> so if people are finding dates, it's gay boys getting it on with uh, straight girls. Um, there is a new dating site, um, that takes you on a tour of toilets. <laughs> As if Toilet? this wasn't a shitty date to start with. Do something.co.uk has come up with a new event that is being trialed out across London, which chiefly involves a singles bar crawl around the city's most notable bogs, which I think is the term for toilets. And what do you do when you get in the toilet? Uh, I think you just go visit. <laughs> you visit the toilet? <clears throat> and then what? What's 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 dating material to that? <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm missing something here. Okay. So, uh, on the first Friday of the month, uh really bad toilet puns, okay. Historical toilet factoids, okay. Um let's see. The tour starts at the Jubilee which is reputedly pay per use loo in Lou. London. It's wait, wait, Lou. it's a Jubilee. Like Jubilee, <laughs> only it's a Jubilee. Jubilee. So this and, is like a happy shitter. Right, right. And then it goes <laughs> and then it goes to the cellar door, which is a cabaret bar set in a toilet. Wow. A cabaret bar in a toilet. And then uh, after a few more watering holes, uh, you take a pit stop at the toilet of St. <laughs> <Saint> Paul's. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the beacon of free toileting. You know, because I, it's in I, I a don't church. want to be part of this party, okay? <laughs> I actually want to do this trip now. Let's do, go. Do you really? I want to see all what? the famous poopers in London. That's what I want to see. I want to see the fame. I want to see the most famous urinal out there. Uh, I just uh, the, the I know the re- original article I read is read was how desperate are you for a date and would you go on this toilet tour of Westminster? No, no. <laughs> You know what? I'm sorry, but I don't think I want to meet a man that goes on a toilet tour to find a date. He's either he's either really gross or has a great sense of humor. Or he's got some kind of strange toilet fetish. That's why I said really gross. And you know what? To each his own. I'm sure he'll find another female with a strange toilet fetish on this fabulous toilet fetish date that he's on. Okay, so some good news, or I don't know if you consider it good news. You know, the, uh, one of the kids that was accused of uh, raping the 16-year-old girl, Steubenville. Yes. yes. Okay. You know, he got convicted, right? He also has to, for the next, every six months for the next 20 years, register as a sex offender. Uh, I think if you are a convicted rapist, you should have to register I for agree. the rest of your life. I agree, yeah. But he has to re-register every six months. He has to He has to check in. It's Is actually, that different it's just than, than what happens with other sex offenders? Yeah, because he's a juvenile. 
Okay. So. Yeah, sometimes juvenile offenders get their records sealed, and they don't have to register as sex offenders when they become adults. His information will not be available, like, online. You know, go to those places online where you get the maps of the sex offenders living right. around you. Find your local rapist. The only problem I have with sex offender websites like that is they don't differentiate in the no. level of sex offender. Right. And I know about 40% of those sex offender cases are things like urinating in public, which... Yeah, yeah. Or, or like streaking in college, like shit like that. And it's like, first off, no one was trying to be sexual unless he was peeing on someone who was enjoying it. And then, you know, <laughs> then it's, it's like a lewd act in public. And still, it was consensual. And I don't think you should be labeled as a sex offender. But most of those sex offenders that are listed on there are not child baby rapists. Right. They're not pedophiling people. You know, right. and that, you know, there there needs to be some kind of discernment with that when they when they make people do that because you know what i did some stupid shit in high school and right. college you know and um that ruined somebody's life forever yes yes it will you know? because you have to put that down on all of your yeah, all, and and every all time about... you apply for a job have you ever been convicted of a blah 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 blah, blah and you have to write on there that i am a convicted sex offender yeah, I, I have to register would, as a you sex know offender. i'm all about put the sex offenders you know, take them and take them out and right. punish them. But you're right. Some people raping babies, in yes. Because they had too many to drink. Hell, I've gone behind a building and squatted. <laughs> I peed in front of a church one time. You know? Oh, right you on the should. lawn. Oh, you, you <laughs> sacrilegious thing. It's God and it's nature and God loves pee. Because it's natural. He made it. God so. does love pee. There's a lot of pee everywhere. Oh, please. I had a lot of pee last Sunday. See? Like, hmm. <laughs> so a lot of pee. Emergency room. No, the problem is you didn't have any <laughs> pee. Yeah, but it felt like I had a lot of pee. No. <laughs> All right. Just so y'all know, God loves piss. So the, another story that I have is sugardaddy.com. Oh, I've, I've heard I've of that there. website. Sugar, D-A-D-D-I-E. Filled out the form. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you get which is exactly daddy? which is exactly what it sounds like. It's people looking for sugar daddy. It's usually right. girls, but there are some boys on there too. Right, looking and uh, and there are daddies that go on there looking for somebody to take. That care was of. a lot of. I think it was right after my divorce. I'm like, hmm, let me find some. Not only are they offering you uh, the opportunity to meet your future sugar daddy or future sugar baby, but they will give you a divorce as well. Free divorces from sugardaddy.com. <laughs> <laughs> At least there's CYA. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> I would get married just to get the free divorce. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I've been divorced twice. Those things ain't cheap, okay? <laughs> Are you trying to turn into a certain person that we know? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Been married and divorced more times than anyone no. should have the right he to. He has be. enough ex wives to hold a convention. It is through a contest. It's not just, you can't just register and get one. So, you what have is it to like? Enter the contest. What is it like? The worst sugar daddy on the planet <laughs> contest? It's like, yeah, I'm going to be your sugar daddy and then I'm not buying you shit. All right, well, I want my free divorce then. It's actually being offered through the company. I'm sure you guys have seen it on your web advertisements. If you watch anything on the web, legalzoom.com yeah, is right. offering the free uh, divorces. So. I have a picture of myself with Robert Chapman. Shapiro from Legal Zoom. Do you? I met him in Hawaii and Maui right after the OJ trial. Mm. And I, you know, you guys know me, trial junkie. <laughs> right. And did uh, you grill him the whole time you were there? I was like, oh my god, it was so great. <laughs> and yeah, he's in his red bathing suit, and I'm in my bathing suit, and we're on the beach in Maui. Me and Robert Shapiro. And we then it was, it was, a, it was a bunch of, there was a whole bunch of people and I'm walking through the town that night, in and Hawaii. one of the people come up to me and go, oh, did you meet Robert De Niro? And I'm like, no, Robert Shapiro. And they're like, oh. Mm. See, to me, Robert Shapiro was more exciting than De Niro because of the court case. I just, watched. I don't know. I, I love Robert De Niro. Oh, I do too. But like, Scent I of was a Woman. Right. A great OJ movie. trial was just, you know, Scent of a Woman was great. It was a great, great fucking great movie. movie. Great so movie. one of the things that I posted was for you. I did read that. And 15, the whole 15 thing. dating tips from Game of Thrones. It's really hard to do on the radio. It's well, and visual. it's hard if you haven't watched the show. Right, right. You don't get Yeah, you don't it. get a lot of them. Well, they have these little animated GIFs that go with them. They're really cool. So if uh, go to our Twitter. Um, I think I posted it on Facebook as well. And you click on the link and you can go see the well, GIFs that go along it, with the Well, if she saw it, then it wasn't on Twitter. It had to have been on well, Facebook. Well, that's right. It had to have been on Facebook. Facebook. So. I did. So, but uh, it's very cool. It it's very, very funny. funny. I thought of you when I posted it. Always be yourself, unless you can be Khaleesi, and then always be Khaleesi. <laughs> I <laughs> want to be the fat Khaleesi. We are so doing that for Halloween. Actually, no, I think I found our Halloween uh, 
get up for this year, it's rock, paper, scissors. Oh! And if we can get a couple of other friends, we're going to do rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> lizard, Spock? Oh, we can get Callie Guy and Silent Mike to be right. lizard and Spock. That's Callie Guy gets to be Spock. I okay. don't want to dress up as a rock. Can you I can be, be scissors. Khaleesi? You can be the sexy Khaleesi scissors. I want to be the fat Khaleesi. Then with dragons and everything. Then let's do Game of Thrones. Who else? I, I need to we're find out who Game the characters are. Uh, I'll be. Can I be the midget? No. The imp. No. The, the imp. imp. The imp. No, you're too tall. No, too tall. you're too tall, and, and your big um, dick's and not I want to do the imp, and I, you know, I love you, but do I they, don't do they show you. his dick? No, no, show. I oh. see it. no, no but they should. They've shown almost every other major male character's penis on that show. Yeah. Have they really? Yeah, there were a couple. Of I haven't seen show. John Snow's penis yet. Oh yeah, we need to see that. HBO, we need John Snow's penis. <laughs> Well, we also we need know, the imp's penis. We'll never see what's his name penis again because it's gone now. Because he's dead. No, he's not dead. His penis is just gone. Oh, that's right. He got his penis chopped yeah, off. They chopped his penis off. <laughs> they cut his fucking penis off. He had three beautiful well, women. Well, that's like that's like a thing that's going around in our country anyway, or all over the world. Penis chopping. Pe- yeah, the, penis chopping. Every chopping. other every other week, I'm reading a story about some woman who chops off some guy's penis. Really? Throws yeah, it right? down the throws it down. What's the one? Garbage that's the garbage disposal. Do they just call the Lorraine and bomb it? <laughs> She, no, she started it. It's I like know. a trend now. She started this trend of chopping off penis. Well, and then they can all have it sewed back on and do porn, just like John Bobbitt did. Uh, you know, and he claims that that was the best thing that ever happened to him, sexually and monetarily, I think. Yeah, he made a lot of money after that. <laughs> did I tell you he used to hit on my mom? Yes. All really? The Where did, at the uh, casino? At, at the casino that my mom works at. My mom's worked at this casino for 20 plus years, and uh, he used to be a regular there, and this was after Lorena Bobbitt, and he used to hit on her all the time. Finally, she had to say, look, I'm happily married with three kids and my husband's penis works um and <laughs> she had to get him off her. it was bad that's just unbelievable a... terrible really it was it's just a scumbag i didn't know a uh, penis chopping was like a new thing it's I, I i swear to you i read a story you know i even not posted a story because it was like again so i didn't even bother <laughs> you know what, posting though? it I another mean, penis really I mean, let's talk about it girls could i mean would you ever have it in you to cut off somebody's dick? No. Oh, hell no. no. What kind of psycho bitches do that? Right? I mean, I what know. would make... I love penis. I would never do I anything to harm how, you penis. Know, I got two ex-husbands and I let them keep their penises. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a firm believer in do one to others, right? It's the golden rule, yeah, right? Do one to others. Off, right? So I wouldn't want anything of mine cut off. So why would I do that to another human being? No. Right? Yeah. But there are a lot of people that don't think that way. No, you're right. Leave the cock alone. That's some madass bitch when you're going to take a knife and cut off a dick. That is some, that's some psycho rage. That is some psycho rage. And usually it's not even like anything over anything crazy. It's like he cheated on you once. And it's like, I can understand like, Kneeing him in the God forbid it was I him in the think face. he's cheating on me or he's starting or although trying we, to cheat on although me. Although we or... do know some crazy bitches who might do that just for thinking about it. Right. There's yeah, lots of crazy bitches do. out we there. We know a couple crazy bitches. <laughs> but um <laughs> poor, poor Rodney. Our uh, midget man of steel is in chat and he says I'm going to go offline for a bit. He just well gone. He said uh, let me know when you stop talking about penises being chopped off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rod. Uh, but 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 Rod, you're okay because all three of us is, have determined we could not chop off. Right, right. we're not chopping off your so penis. So we're okay right. to be around. We're safe. <laughs> we're the safe zone. Now yes. we can't say that for every woman who has walked in and out of this studio. Right. But we personally love and revere the penis. Yes, we do. We, we are one day going to make a mecha trip to Japan during the giant penis. You know, and I'm not even have. sure that the reason I couldn't cut off a penis is because I love and enjoy a penis, but. Like I said, I just don't think I got that kind of psycho rage in me, right. you know? I, right. I just, I don't think I could do it, even if I thought I could do it. Well, now, I I didn't, could do didn't it. Lorena Bobbitt say that she did it she was being abused? No, no, she did it because he, he was cheating, cheating on her. That was it. But there, there are a lot of women who say that if they're abused, and I've seen this somewhere before. That and if, you know, that that's true. If we were in that case, you know, I've never been in that situation that I was getting knocked around every night. Now, maybe I could get to that rage point. I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think I could get to the rage point where I would deliberately because it takes a lot of work to chop a penis off. It's not like <laughs> just shooting someone. <laughs> oh, that even hurts just thinking about your way. My clit hurt when you did that. Just <laughs> now, <laughs> my little clit hood went. Ow! 
I'd rather it be uh, uh like what's her chop? what's her name from Walking Dead with the samurai. Michonne. M- Michonne. Yeah, 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 it better yeah. be a Michonne yeah, one. Give me a Game of Thrones sword. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I I could never make it to thinking about chopping his penis off because that takes premeditation. You've got to get him alone and asleep and in a position where you can chop it off. I would just go straight for the gun. I'd never actually make it to the penis cutting part because I would satisfy my urge to injure you by shooting you. <laughs> Read Midget Man of Steel. What did you say? I revere my cock too. I Paul revere it. I put it on horses and yell, "The British are coming!" <laughs> <laughs> Wait, aren't you French? Shouldn't that be the French are coming? Wait, I just want to know if it's attached when he puts it on the horse and yells, <laughs> "The British are coming!" Maybe he has a detachable I just penis. See, I can just see a small uh, northeastern Frenchman running, uh, bouncing through the woods on a tiny little horse. Oh, so tonight we got a great guest in studio. We do. She we should do. be here any minute. And, any minute. Uh, now. Big cutie Eve. Big cutie Eve. If you haven't seen her here, I'm gonna put up her picture right now on our. This is Alexia from the Curvaceous Bound.